<laughs> okay, great. Thank you. Well, this, as I mentioned earlier, that the talk was going to be like an hour. I do hope that we have more sessions. I would like to try uh explain it in a, in in the fast as fast as I can. So, am I audible enough? All right. So, are you able to see the screen, the PowerPoint? All right. Yes. Yeah. So, so. so, for the talk today is going to be about transforming ELT for environmental sustainability through yeah, what is going on? practice and research. So yeah, as I mentioned earlier, so I'm currently assistant professor in English education department, Muhammadiyah University of Surabaya, Indonesia, and I'm inventor of eco ELT concept or a founder of eco ELT community. And this is my email if you are uh, interested in studying or teaching environmental issues in ELT, then you can contact me through my email. And my research expertise revolve around eco ELT, language teacher cognitions and professional development and eco criticism. My research focus also relates to the global sustainable de development goals which are four, yeah, four goals, I pick it. The first one is like quality education, climate actions, life below water, and the last one is life on land. And as for your information for my personal and professional engagements in environmentalism, so I've been engaged to this game since I was high school in 2010, and then I was eco-ranger in high school and in 2013, I was selected to be one of 100 Asian youth, ASEAN youth eco-leaders, and we did five weeks volunteerism and community engagement. And during my college 2014, I was also selected to be 100 young Southeast Asian leaders initiatives. And we did kind of workshops in, on education, social issues, including environment. And after college, I also won a grant from US state's government. And we did a project called ASEAN Youth Energy Institute Camp, and we selected 29 youth across ASEAN to get workshops and training on ASEAN renewable energy issues. And 2014, 2023, I'm a founder of Eco ELD Concept, and 2023, this and last year, my doctoral dissertation is also revolved around eco ELT, Islamic environmentalism, and eco criticism. So I've been kind of uh, engaging to this theme of environmentalism since like for uh, 13 years. So I'm currently also a global community of empirical eco criticism. So the study of teaching, uh, the study of uh, literary works, yeah, in relation to environment especially and how environmental tax impacts on the human relations to nature. And then already done this one. And I would like to invite you all first to our new, our new Eco ELT community in Facebook group. So you can just uh, type Eco ELT and then afterwards you can just find this group. So this Facebook group uh, is a global group and then you can have connections with global ELT teachers and scholars who are keen towards uh, studying and teaching and they shall resources about the teaching materials uh, to teach environmental issues in ELT and the study about teaching environmental issues in ELT. So I invite you all to join this group. Let's begin then. So Eco ELT here concerns uh, or was born because of uh, the current situations that is happening in our earth. Which is the earth, the place we call home is slowly dying. I would like to illustrate with this article. So this research uh, on the global, on the current geological epoch that you can see here, this is our earth uh, in 11th, kind of 11,700 11, years ago. The earth is uh, like in the green color here is safe for operating space safe for us uh, for us to live but currently right now the earth is getting in a warm conditions because of humans encroachments to nature human inter interventions to nature and this happens right now you can see that our earth in the 11th 
1,700 uh, years ago are in a green situations where we can live in a peace and no ecological problems. But right now it's shifting. It's there, even like this purple, you can see uh, the high risk zones such as the fresh water is changed dramatically. And then there is land system also changed. Bio biosphere integrity also, also changes and CO2 concentrations also change. So mm -hmm. this is happening. This is what is happening in, in our earth. This is the situations where we live right now. And we should understand these uh, treacherous uh, situations that happening in our earth. And then, you know what? This is like the impact of because of the warm a geological epoch that is happening in our earth with the first one is climate change. So climate change uh, in 2023, based on the UNEP report that the current temperature raise is 1.1 Celsius above pre-industrial levels, which has led to more frequent and hazardous weather events. So you can see in our environment that a lot of uh, weather events like hazard weather weather events such as typhoon and so on and so forth more becoming more frequent so this also impact on the ecosystems the equilibrium of ecosystem also impacts on us our existence and also the existence of our fellow friends animals and plants so we can see our friends here the biodiversity also lost like the wildlife populations, mammals, birds, amphibians, reptiles, and fish have seen a devastating like 96% since, since 1970. So this is like this happening in our earth and we should and we must actually comprehend these situations, these dangerous situations, and we need to take actions on this. And I would like to share a little bit what is the story behind the COVID-19. So one of the COVID-19, uh, what is it? Uh, kind of the causes of COVID-19 is because of air pollution. I would like to explain further about this. So you can see that COVID-19 is a lot of humongous uh, numbers of people who were passed away were dead because of COVID-19, right? And this is happening like 2019, 20, 20, 21, 22. And then maybe our relatives, even my relatives also were <laughs> passed away because of COVID. And then maybe your relatives, your family was passed away because of COVID. One of interesting story about COVID-19 based on scientific uh, empirical findings is that the transportations for the virus to spread is because of the particles, which is the dust. We call it aerosols. So aerosols is small particulate matter, small, uh, what is it, kind of dust that is linger on the air. And then when we breathe, when we sneeze, when we kind of talk, uh, we produce kind of virus. And then the virus will kind of right on the dust or particle and then getting rolling, 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 and then we can get affected from the virus. So sometimes we figure out why I already kind of keep distance like six meters, even like seven meters, not one meters, yeah, six meters, seven meters, but still I get affected from COVID-19. It's because of the particles, like dust, like smokes. So when we smoke, and then there is uh, like a smoke, right? And then those kind of particles just are become the transportations for the virus to spread. And those smokes are come from our daily life, which is our uh, air pollution. We burn trashes and then from the transportations. So these kind of particles become the avenue for airborne viruses, not only for the COVID-19 virus to spread, but also for uh, other viruses like influenza and so on. So meaning that we can see the situations that environmental problems like air pollution, climate change, biodiversity loss, uh, impacting our existence as humans, but also a whole ecosystem, like for our friends, animals, and plants. So in a sense that we are interconnected each other and we need to take actions 
on this kind of situation so that in the future, there is no kind of like global pandemic that is because of the uh, environmental problems that many people were passed away uh, or were, will be dead because of environmental problems. So we need to take action now for that. And then in relation to our field in ELT, how about our field? Are there any unsustainable practices of ELT? Yes. Sometimes we do ELT conferences. When we do face-to-face -face conferences, we do not think about the sustainable consumptions of our food. When we do conferences, we sometimes win witness our uh, students who are doing still littering in the classes. And those are happening when we are teaching in, <laughs> teaching English in the in teaching English in the classroom. So we, we witness a uh, kind of practices, unsustainable practices that is happening in our classes. And also when we do professional development. So I'm happy that this professional development right now can be another option such as doing Zoom like this. So this kind of addressing the unsustainable consumptions of food and drinks when we are doing face-to-face -face conferences related to English language teaching. So that's why these are uh, the unsustainable practices that we can see in our field of study so that we can relate uh, what is happening actually in our field of study. So the next question is, would we do really, do we really need to, need to wait our unsustainable practices coming to our field of study? Or we can, we take actions now to tackle current and future possible unsustainable practices in our field of ELT. As English teachers, as English educators and researchers, we must take actions now. And I would like to further elaborate why we should take actions now. So this is a good book if you want to download. This called Tissol and Sustainability, published in 2020. This book evokes uh, or echoes the importance of our field of study, which is uh, ELP, yeah. our lovely field yeah. in this language teaching, to taking part uh -huh. in addressing environmental issues or sustainability crisis. And then yeah. another one is Borden, 2010. Back then, actually, it was started that our field of study has potential to address sustainability issues or environmental issues in English classes. Because in our classes, in English classes, we have a lot of text yeah, about environment and then a lot of videos we can uh, play in our classes about environments related to sustainability, sustainable development goals, such as related to uh, quality education, related to gender, climate action. Yeah. So there are humongous mm -hmm. or ubiquitous teaching materials that related to sustainability that we can integrate in our English classes. And that's uh, the evidence or the evidence of our ELT field that our ELT has the potential to address sustainability issues through teaching or integrating sustainability topics in English classes. And you know what? This is the uh, the current study from Mercer et al. published in the top one of the top journal in ELT from Oxford University. Uh, it was echoed by these scholars that language teaching is not exempt from the responsibilities of education more broadly. So meaning that ELT has the responsibility and at the same time has the potential to address global issues, including environmental crisis. So addressing environmental crisis is not the job of science education, science subject matter only. We, as English teachers, we are human. We carry responsibility as humans to address environmental issues. And as English teachers, we need to integrate that as become of our responsible person to our duty, as our duty to protect the earth that we can integrate in our English classes. So the job of environmental addressing environmental problems is not only is not solely on the hand of science education or on the hands of STEM education, but we need to address environmental problems in uh, across disciplines, across subject matters, and even across sectors, not only in education, but using economic technology and so on and so forth. So that's why. English education or ELT in this case has the same responsibility as other fields of study to address environmental issues, 
to make our earth safe and to address planetary and uh, to make the planetary ecosystem uh, becoming more harmonious and equilibrium. So that's why this is a very good study to start with, to reading, to understand completely about uh, the importance of teaching environmental issues in English classes. And other scholars also already echoed the potential of or the, the importance of in teaching environmental issues or even studying environmental issues in English classes. Because in English classes, based on Bakel back then in 1996, the nature of English classroom is appropriate for more comprehensible, comprehensive intellectual and philosophical discussions. English students can learn about nature and environmental ethics through uh, literary texts. There are a lot of literary texts like English poetry, English short stories about nature, about environment. And we can use those uh, as a teaching materials in English classes. And we can have discussions about that while we are also improving their English proficiency, but also they learn about the, the environmental problems. And this will increase the possibility of the students to love nature, to be a part of the nature, to feel empathy to nature. So, the, so we as English teachers, in this case, we, we can achieve two goals. The first one is improving the English proficiency of the students, but at the same time, we can also make the students become more inclusions, more inclusive to the nature, to be more connected to the nature. So these are the potentials in our English classes. And as an English teachers, we have we have more opportunities, more autonomy to incorporate specific contents in our English lessons, including the contents of about environment. So we have actually uh, ha enjoying the degree of autonomy uh, of choosing what kind of English texts we want to teach, what kind of English topics we want to teach. And then you know what? Uh, El Sharif in 2020, uh, 2013 already echoed that when students learn uh, in our English classes, the goal is students are becoming proficient in English uh, language, right? And then the students need to take course, need to, need to take uh, language assessment tests such as TOEFL and IELTS. So what is the benefit of teaching environmental issues in, uh, in relation to TOEFL and IELTS tests? for the students, our students, when we when they take about uh, those tests. So when we teach environmental issues, the the readings, the writings, we can integrate environmental topics uh, in the reading and writing, and those will prepare the students to take a TOEFL and IELTS tests, because the TOEFL and IELTS tests, the topic of uh, the discussions in reading and writing and speaking also related to the environment, economic and technology. So there, when we teach about environmental issues in, 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 English, in English classroom, actually we are preparing the our students to take the proficiency tests so that they can have uh, they can achieve the level of certain levels of proficiency in English. So there are humongous and tremendous benefits of integrating environmental issues in English language teaching. So we must, as a teacher, see our students as a global sustainable citizens. So meaning that the students in the future, uh, in we see our students in our class meaning that they are carry responsibility to address environmental problems as the humans, to make our earth safe to live for us as the humans and our friends like animals and plants. And also they are English students who must be proficient in English to be a part of the global citizens. So when we see as the teachers, we need to shift our mindset and our view that we, uh, we not only teach the students English language only to achieve the students, uh, to help students achieve certain English proficiency, but we also uh, encourage students or help the students uh, to improve their humanity, their being as a humans, that they are responsible to achieve or to address environmental issues. So we see the students as not only a person who can, who must able to be able to speak English, write English, or be proficient in English, but they are as humans. They have responsibility to save uh, our earth. Remember, 
as I mentioned earlier that English language teaching has the same responsibility as other fields of study or discipline to address environmental issues. Addressing environmental issues cannot be addressed only with science, education, but all disciplines need to be hand in hand to address environmental problems. So we, mean, we need to understand this kind of role in our current role of English language teaching. So that's why we need to transform our mind, our mindset, and our model of teaching English language so that it is it deals with the sustainability so that we can help the help the students to become sustainable global citizens. So we, we also need to make sure that our students are understand that they are a part of the nature. We are a part of the nature, actually. We can see ourselves. We need to reflect in our body, like 62% are water. And then 96% like protein. We need 72% water. Imagine that there is no water in our body. We cannot think. Our body will be like disposal. I mean, like we'll be break it down. So we, we need nature we are a part of the nature we need to understand this existence that our body is a part of the nature when we feel that we are a part of the nature there is less possibility for us to harm nature because we we feel that we are a part of the nature the nature is our part of uh, our family and then there is no there is less possibility for us to harm nature so that's why we need to uh, shift the worldview of the students so that the students do not think that they are the master of the nature and the nature are the ser their servants, but they are egalitarian position, meaning that they are, the nature are their part of their body, part of their friends, their family, so that they can have a positive treatment to nature. So these are the job of everyone, all of us as human beings, to help nature. And then, as 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 of now, uh, I already documented like around a hundred thirteen papers around the world, around the globe related to eco ELT from nineteen eighties to two thousand twenty three. So, I found out that the attempts on eco ELT for environmental sustainability are limited in numbers, unstructured, and no inclusive attempts. So that's why I coined and I proposed the concept of ECO-ELT. I hope that ECO-ELT will be a home for environmental movements in ELT to live and grow. So I already kind of have uh, disseminated uh, this kind of idea of ECO-ELT across uh, countries. And then like around 11 countries, I already propagated the idea of ECO-ELT so that I my hope that my goal is to share the idea of eco ELT so that a lot of teachers, a lot of researchers now are also taking into account of studying and teaching environmental issues in ELT. Imagine that a lot of, if a lot of English teachers across the globe teaching environmental issues or a lot of scholars, ELT scholars studying about environmental issues, Imagine that there is a coordinated actions and efforts or end of force across the globes in our field of study of ELT that we are contributing to addressing environmental issue. So there, our field of ELT, there is no skepticism. Where is the contributions of our field of ELT? As of now, only 100 uh, 13 papers, I found out that only very few attempts or end of force of our field of study. So we do not need to kind of, uh, I mean, like there is emerging skepticism or uh, voices out there questioning about our field of ELT. Where is the contributions of ELT in this case to address environmental problem to achieve environmental sustainability? Well, we do not have yet coordinated actions. That's why I propose eco ELT as a term, as a framework, and also as a home for the movements of environmental teaching and study in ELT to live and grow. 
And I do hope that uh, in the years, like this February 15, I would like uh, to kind of having uh, selections. So my articles will be in, is still in reviewing uh, in the Harvard Yale Southeast Asian Studies Graduate Conference. So these two conferences related to graduate studies and then current scholars, emerging current scholars. And I propose Eco ELT. So I would like to ask your help to pray for me. I, I do hope that I'm I, I'm selected. Uh, my article is selected so that I I can eco more. I can voice out more or advocate more about Eco ELT in Harvard University and Yale University. So I talk a lot about eco ELT anyway. So what is eco ELT? A very simple one. Eco ELT is simply defined as the study and teaching of environmental issues in ELT. If you are teachers, if you want to teach about environmental issues in ELT, air pollution, climate change, biodiversity loss, and so on and so forth, you are a part of eco ELT movements. If you are a researcher, academicians, professors in higher education, if you want to if you want to study about environmental teaching in ELT, then you are also a part of eco ELT movements. So there are two branches in this case, the study and the teaching. If you are teaching about environmental issues, you are a part of eco ELT. If you are studying about or researching about environmental issues in ELT, then you are also a part of eco ELT movement. So you can choose whatever you want. You are practitioners or you are researchers, or you can both. As me, like I'm also teachers, I'm also a researcher, so I can do both. Then off you go, you can, up to you, you can choose whatever you want, as long as you are a part of eco ELT movements. So because of eco ELT also relates to the sustainable development goals, then in sustainable development goals, there are three principles or three pillars, the social, economic, and environment. So these three pillars are interconnected each other or one another, but in eco ELT, we're focusing on environment, which revolves to the goal of six, seven, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So eco ELT do not address like economic, Although in environmental teaching or in environmental discussions, there is economic uh, sites, but we do not necessarily focusing on the profit and so on and so forth. So we just focusing on environment, but we also talking about social economic because this is our sometimes the impact or the causes of environmental problems. And then eco ELT itself, I defined or I coined this term so eco ELD term was born in 2014. I published an article uh, called eco ELD material development. So it, in 2014, it, it refers to using environmental literary works in ELT to instill children's love of environment and virtues of local wisdom. So eco ELD back then only refers to using environmental literary works such as English, uh, such as English environmental poetry, short stories to children, to teach children English, and at the same time, uh, improving or uh, nurturing their love of environment and local wisdom. But I realized that this kind of conceptually distance of eco ELT are very strict and specific, not inclusive. So that's why I refined the conceptualization in 2020, but it still it still uses uh, the approach of eco-criticism, which is the study of environmental teaching, using environmental issues using literary works. But the difference is using not only printed, but also digital literary works. But I found out again that this conceptualization that I refined in 2020 was not inclusive enough because environmental teaching or environmental movements in ELT are numerous and using diverse approaches, such as we can use uh, project-based learning to teach environmental issues, not necessarily using literary works, but we can also project-based project -based learning, problem-based learning, communicative language teaching, any kind of methods and approaches. So that's why I refined uh, the concept of ELT 2000 in 2023 last year to be more inclusive. And I explained it in the, in the uh, philosophical 
standpoints such as from the ontology, epistemology, and axiology standpoints. You can read this my publications to understand comprehensively about the philosophical points of this eco ELD. But I also discuss it this kind of basis of eco ELD. So why we should call it eco ELD? Why not green ELD? Why not blue ELD? Why not pink ELT, black ELT, why not other colors? Why should we call it eco ELT? Why? So it deals with the environmental criticisms, environmental movements. We, as humans, we live on land, right? And then living on land, shifting our perceptions that when we see good nature, the best representations of good nature, without pollution is always green because we live on land. We see something green, oh, that's good nature. We see, we see nature that is no pollution is always green. So that's why we always uh, stuck in the paradigm that seeing nature, good nature is always with green color. So that's why we always name it like green economy, green movement and so on and so forth. While in 2021, there is a new movement called Blue Ecocriticism. This movement addresses uh, the naming of green in every environmental movement. Because we always think that good nature is always green color, then we forget that environmental problems also happen on the water, on ocean. Remember our earth. 70% of our earth is ocean, right? Is water. So there are a lot of environmental problems in happening also in our water. Why not we call it as blue ELT or blue environmentalism representing blue color of the ocean? So this is naming of green and blue or even other colors. I challenge this name. Why? Because environmental problems have happening not only on our land, but also in the ocean, on the air. How about in our air, like air pollution and so on and so forth? Is air, there is color, white? No, it's clear, no. So should we call it clear ELD? No, we should call it eco ELD. Why? Eco ELD representing the ecosystem, the ecology. So if we name it our movement of eco ELT to be green ELT, blue ELT, it will lead to misunderstanding for the publics that, oh, the job of eco ELT, the job of ELT just only addressing environmental problems on land, if we name it as green ELT. And then there is misunderstanding that if we name it blue ELT, oh, just only problems on uh, the ocean. Well, environmental problems happening on the land, ocean, air, the whole cosmos. So meaning that we need to like naming our movement to be more inclusive so that do not uh, lead to misunderstanding for the publics towards our efforts, our contributions of ELT in addressing environmental problems. So that's why uh, the eco ELT is the best representations of the name to call it and then to signify that environmental pro environment, uh, English language teaching has the commitment and contribution to address environmental problems happening on land, oceans, air, and the whole cosmos. And these are the scholars who are addressing the naming of green in environmental movement. So what are the eco-ELT bases? So remember that eco-ELT is the transdisciplinary field, yeah, transdisciplinary field. There are two uh, kind of bases in this case. The first one is the language, and the second one is the ecology of environmental or environmental education. The first one is language. So eco ELD basis is uh, anchored to the social constructivism theory on second language language learning and acquisition. What is social constructivism theory? So social constructivism emphasizes the roles of social interactions and cooperative learning in constructing no learners' knowledge or understanding of reality. This differs from cognitive constructivism, which concerns learner capability to build reality, meaning that our English students 
to not only rely on their internal capacity, internal competence to acquire language, to learn language, but also they rely on other factors outside their body, outside their competences, which is the books they read, the partners they are speaking with, such as the teachers and then the uh, kind of friends. So other factors outside their internal capacity or competency also contributes to the language acquisitions and learning of English learners. And ECO ELP provide ubiquitous teaching materials such as English books about environment, English videos about environment. So those kind of uh, materials can be comprehensible input for the language acquisitions and learning for language uh, for English learners. So that's why English language teaching about environmental issues can also contribute to the development of English proficiency of the students. And the second part, if the ecology or environmental education, there are three bases in this case for the ECO-ELT movement. The first one is environmental humanities or e EH. So environmental humanities is the current uh, interdisciplinary field of study that researches environmental problems and meanings of good life for all beings through the lens of arts and humanities. Meaning that environmental humanities is a new, is a new field of study to address environmental problems using uh, the coordinated actions of all fields. So like addressing climate change, we do not only rely on education, but also on the anthropology and then for the linguistic parts and for other fields such as religions and so on and so forth. So addressing one problem is using coordinated uh, actions or coordinated fields of study. And we can incorporate this kind of English environmental humanities in the approach of eco-ELP practices. Why? We can, for example, when we teach about uh, nature in the classes, such as animals and plants, we can also teach or uh, integrate the idea of animal rights. For example, we can ask the students to write about animals, the rights of animals, why uh, animals should live, why the animals should be free in the in the kind of the what life and so on and they need to write in english in opinion paragraph so this kind of uh example of integrating animal rights uh, can hear you. Or theory or plants rights movement of theory in our english English classes and also our english classes also uh eco elt and cur to the basis of Education for Sustainable Development. So ECO ELT shares a similar orientations with ESD, focusing on developing students and teachers' awareness of and connections with nature, as well as promoting values and behaviors that contribute to environmental sustainability. And the last one is ECO pedagogy. So ECO pedagogy is also a new movement that encourage a holistic view of the world, considering earth and all entities as interconnected. Its goal is to provide students with a deeper understanding of environmental violence. So when they are learning environmental issues in English classes, the students are humans, right? And then they can also see their situations around them. What are environmental violence related to nature that are happening? And then they can discuss about it in the classes with teachers and with their peers or with their friends. So meaning that uh, we can incorporate a lot of fields, a lot of approaches in teaching environmental issues and also studying environmental issues in ELT. And you can see this is the summary of the benefits for the students and for English teachers. So when we teach about environmental issues in English classes, the benefits also not only goes to the English students, but also English teachers. Definitely for English students, their linguistics will be developed, uh, their intellectuality, for example, their knowledge about environments, and then the social, when they do project-based learning, their cooperations is also built. There even their emotions. When they talk about environment, they, when they see about in, environmental problems, environmental violence happening around them, they can also be, uh, be uh, feel empathy towards nature. And for us in English teachers or educators in odd levels, whether in secondary levels, primary levels or tertiary levels, we can also be have, having 
eco-morality, meaning that we can be an agent of change. In this case, not only improving or prepare, preparing students to have proficiency in English so that they can be a global citizens, but a global citizens with a sustainable behavior. So we can also be a part of a uh, uh, change to prepare those kind of, I call it global citizens, uh, uh, Global citizen students, yes. Global sustainable citizen students, as I mentioned earlier about it. So if you are English teachers, we are English educators, then if you want to teach about environmental issues in English lessons, you can use a post-method pedagogy approach. So this is like the basis. You can choose any kind of approaches, methods that are that fits with your context of study, with your environment, with your situations and conditions or English proficiency of the students, your classroom. You have the autonomy to choose whatever English uh, approaches or teaching approaches, methods that you use as long as they are they fit with the context, with your context, and then you are able to do that, then off you go. There is no restrictions to not only using communicative language teaching or student-centered approach. You can use any kind of approach. Although teacher-centered approach in this case is also possible. Imagine my research in 2019, I did a kind of research on rural area where they do not have book, internet connectivity, and so on and so forth. They rely on teachers to be the center of knowledge. In that case, you cannot, uh, using student-centered approach, you have to use a teacher-centered approach because the context is different. If you are in urban, if you are in city, that will be another case. But in this case, in rural area, in rural area where they do not have books and so on and so forth. So restricting using only teacher uh, student center approach in eco ELT will restrict the movement the movements of eco ELT itself. So that's why I propose the principles of post method pedagogy in this case for the teachers to use any kind of approaches methods and kind of uh, kind of uh, approach methods or techniques, as long as they fit with your context of study, then you go. So how do we implement eco-ELT in English classes? There are many kind of uh, reigns, but I propose this kind of five reigns. This call it uh, eco-ELT interventions. So you can teach about sustainable consumptions in English classes, or you can use approach of experiential. You can bring students to go out the nature, to observe the nature, and then afterwards to do report in English about the nature, presentations about nature. You can also develop their cognitive uh, competencies, such as knowledge, awareness, or attitude towards nature, emotion, their feelings of happiness, oneness, empathy towards nature, or even sifting their worldview. You can have eco-critical discussions in this case to discuss about their roles of as humans in nature, in English, of course. So I give you examples. In my classes, uh, I do, uh, I kind of did a project called Descriptive Writing about Non-Human Plants and Animals. I asked the students to go out to nature, observe the nature, to take a picture about animals and plants, right? And then they go back to the classroom and then they write English descriptive for paragraph, just only one paragraph about animal and plant, they took the picture, but they need to position themselves as an animal. What if they are, they were as an animal? Oh, as if I am an animal that I took, what they feel, what they see, what they heard, they need to describe all of them as if that they are the animals and plants. So they are not humans, they position themselves as animals and plants. So in this case, this is are the product of their my students. So the students improve their English proficiency, especially in writing, but also empathy towards nature. They feel empathy, they feel sad towards nature when they see kind of uh, dried plants, like, like maybe uh, caved animals and so on. So. They, we can actually achieve both. First, the first one is like empathy towards nature. The second one is English proficiency. What are other kind of example? We can ask the students to do essay writing if they want. If we can, if we are in higher education, for example, we can ask the students to go out to the nature, observe, to report. 
And afterwards, we can also do eco-critical pedagogy. We can use poetry about nature, song about nature, discussions about nature, video about nature. And then we can also, in young learners, we can also songs about nature, for example, animal habitats. So we can do about that. In English, of course, because it is English classes. <laughs> and then the second one, this is in context of Myanmar, actually. So here, this is the uh, example from Misan. So she did a project on access planting trees with the nature uh, in, in English, in her English classes. So it happened in 2016, actually. So in Myanmar, the movement of environmental teaching in ELT or eco ELT was started. Actually, I, I just recorded this in 2016. If Myanmar, hello Myanmar scholars or teachers, if you have articles or papers about your teaching experiences or your research about teaching environmental issues in, in English classes, please send me because I need those kind of papers to read and to uh, to collect so that I can document it, the movements, historical movements of eco ELT across the globe. And there are other, we can also do drama on climate change. I did drama on climate change in higher education in Sumba, in Sumbawa, yeah. And then also, I also did a lot of activities. You can also do digital storytelling, uh, blogs, YouTube videos, eco drama, eco media, and so on and so forth. A lot of activities we can integrate based on your creativity and innovations in your classes. And how about doing research? Because this topic, this talk is about teaching and also research, right? So if we are scholars or academicians in, in this case, or professors in higher education, we, the co-ELT, we need to understand that the co-ELT is interdisciplinary study, meaning that we can learn knowledge from various disciplines within the scope of single project of eco-ELT or study about eco-ELT. So we can do approach of eco-criticism, animal rights, and so on and so forth when do research about eco-ELT. This is, for example, I give you example of research about how to develop environmental teaching, environmental materials in English classes. How about develop curriculum, developing curriculum of eco-ELT, assessment of eco-ELT, students' understanding of environmental issues or environmental awareness when teaching, when learning about English, even policy, books, and so on and so forth. In any kinds of settings, formal, informal, non-formal education, TESOL, TEFL, TESOL, and so on and so forth. This is a new movement. This is a new field of study, a branch, new branch of field of study of ELT, call it eco-ELT. This is new. So that's why it so that's why it is new. There is a great room, a humongous room, tremendous room for us to play in part to research about eco ELT. And I warmly welcome all of you scholars to devote your time, to devote your uh, kind of expertise to do research on eco ELT. So this is as the examples. Uh, Matthew investigated applications of eco-criticism eco ELT in two secondary schools in South Auckland. Putri even did environmental advocacy in English classes using digital storytelling. And this is in Myanmar in 2020-23. Uh, there is a study from Nying and Mar about English language teachers' knowledge of SDGs and their attitudes towards incorporating sustainable development goals in ELT in Myanmar. And this is my research. Uh, still in review, yeah, I have seven article review in Scopus uh, about eco-ELT, including in the Oxford University and so on and so forth. And this is one of my uh, kind of hint for the result. This is the mixed method study. So this is the result of mixed method study, but I changed it into after I displayed the quantitative result, qualitative result, and then I integrated the quantitative and qualitative results into kind of the pictures like this, the figure. So this is like nature connectedness and interest, how eco-musicology, how to teach learning environmental issues uh, through songs, English songs such as earth, yeah, earth songs, and then how this develops students, uh, nature connectedness and interest. And this is the result is they have a more development uh, in terms of their sense of belongings to nature, a part of nature and interest to nature. And this is also 
uh, kind of my study, still under uh, review in Scopus Journal, I call it Climate Change is Destructive, a pre-surface English teacher's perspectives on climate change and integrations in ELT. So in conclusions, anyway, ELT teachers or uh, practitioners, researchers carries the responsibility to address environmental issues. We are agents of change on environmental sustainability. What does it mean? Then we have the responsibility too. We develop language de uh, proficiency of English students, but also we need to shape or build or nurture students' positive relationship with nature. And we can achieve that through eco-ELP research and teaching. So I would like to invite everyone to remember that ELT has the res responsibility and potential to address environmental issues, environmental crisis, saving our planetary ecosystem. And let's prove to the world that our ELT field yeah, has the commitment and will continuously participate in local, national, and global environmental sustainability. I repeat, yeah, we have commitment and will continuously participate in addressing environmental problem. It is not too late for our field of study, DSOL or ELT to join in to contribute to saving the world. It is not too late for our field of study, ELT to join in and contribute to saving the world. Let's take action now. Let's save our earth through eco ELT. I thank you everyone. Yeah, for the moderator, I hope that I do not exceed the time. I try my best to explain to you all comprehensively from the background uh, to the practical examples. All right, so I welcome any kind of discussions, question and answer, maybe comments. I mostly welcome about that. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Jeffrey, excuse yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, may I introduce myself? Sure, go. Ah, okay, thank you. Uh, the first, my name is Ruri. Uh, the first question is, uh, I can't register from your link. So, uh, uh, but maybe maybe there is uh, something wrong with your link about the registration maybe? Oh, yeah. In okay. the first, yeah, there uh, was technical issue. Okay, I see. And then the second, actually, we are as a teachers, we have already... Uh, give methody talking about the environment, but actually not, not the completely like like your, maybe your presentation. We just describe about the animal, describe about the environment, not only, but uh, maybe after this, we can we can try to practice or we can to give the, our students how to, uh, inc sorry, how to decrease about the, uh, the pollution in surround uh, our our class maybe maybe uh you have you have something difficult uh, method or difficult song that we try to uh, teach our student easier because this topic is quite difficult for our student maybe <laughs> maybe yeah uh, like like the easiest way maybe okay. okay thank you thank you thank you Bu thank you Mrs R Ruri Ruri yeah Ruri yeah. Uh, may I know what is the grade of your students it is high school? uh I'm junior high school oh, junior. seventh grade oh seventh yeah. grade junior high school yeah. awesome wonderful yeah. well first thing first thank you very much that you have been taking effort to integrate teaching environmental issues and I applaud you thank you and I do hope okay, that you're you welcome continue yeah. that with as long as your life as long as your life okay. so please continue that so regarding yeah. to your questions what kind of english songs that are appropriate related to the uh, air pollution for oh, yeah. uh, uh particularly for your context for the seventh grade junior high schools yeah yeah, yeah. actually there are many songs uh you many can download it in youtube english oh i air see pollutions, because i did research uh about that kind of air pollution, uh, maybe like two, two, two years ago. And then I found out a good song. So maybe I can oh, share I it to you. Oh, okay, you can share, just join, you. you can just join in our Eco ELT. Uh, Facebook in Facebook? Okay. Yeah, I have with... already, uh, already tried in my Facebook looking for your your account, okay. maybe, uh, but I didn't, I didn't find you. 
for your maybe ERT or eco ERT. Okay, wait a minute, please, everyone. I would like to share <laughs> this to you in Zoom. So please uh, see the meeting chat group right now and join yeah. to the community. So this is a global community and scholars around the globe. Around the globe. So you can just uh, join in and then we shared each other. And this group is connected with the Korean TESOL, oh, TESOL Asia and so on with the uh, kind of research group related to oh, uh, environmental issues. So I can share my, yeah, my kind of uh, English songs related to air pollutions. Well, there is also kind of poetry about uh, air pollution. Air pollution. Kind of, yeah, air pollution. We can also teach not only using songs. I foster maybe. We try poetry, to, uh, 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 we give we give a uh, kind of exam or kind of a duty to mm -hmm. our student to make a poster to describe the, mm -hmm. describe about the their environment. We try to integrate about the pollution, talking about smokes, maybe about their maybe in their bad habit, mm -hmm. and then uh, for example, they threw something like a dustbin or bin in everywhere. Mm -hmm. After uh, in my in my school, there is a good. Uh, like activity, uh, maybe one of activity uh, before we leave our class, we threw the uh, bin, sampah, uh, yeah, kind of, and then we clean our class, and then there are there are some of students every day before we leave the class, we threw the, uh, I mean, the uh, trash can, mm -hmm. so the class is very, uh, clean. clean before we leave it. Yeah, that's wonderful. I mean, yeah, those practices are real. You can also, in teaching air pollution, you can ask your students to go out and then to breathe. Yeah. And then to go into the classes to breathe, to inhale the, the air. And then they can also compare when they go to, you ask the, the students to go out to the nature, yeah, maybe to rice fields yeah. with the good uh, conditions of nature. They need to inhale the air. Then wow. they can change, they can, Feel the they can feel the yeah they can feel Even the difference that. in that way uh they can they can have awareness about the air they are breathing whether the air they are breathing is clean or maybe dangerous for them maybe they can observe the air so this kind of uh experiential we call it experiential outdoor activity experiential learning is also becoming an avenue or a good method to uh to teach environmental issues such as air pollution and so on and remember everyone addressing or solving environmental issues cannot be in heartbeat cannot be like in a quick we teach environmental issues right now air pollution in our classes 90 minutes the next day air pollution will be gone no 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 so we cannot address climate change like we teach climate change right now the climate change will never happen in the next day or tomorrow. This is a commitment. This is needs to be, to be persistent and continuous. So that's why we need to take actions and be patient for that. This have the value, remember, we as a humans, we see our students also as humans, we carry responsibility to save our earth. Well, thank you very much for your wonderful questions, Ipururi, yeah, and please you. stay continue teaching okay. environmental. Okay, thank you. Good luck for you, Mr. Jeffrey. Anytime. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Jeffrey. There's a question here uh, from M. Karunir, and she or he is saying that, do you encounter any difficulties while teaching about nature? If yes, what are the challenges you find most important while teaching environmental education? Okay, so... The most, the very good questions, actually. This is very good questions and practical. When I teach, I can reflect that. When I teach environmental issues a lot, actually, using eco-musicology, English songs, English video, even drama right now, drama about climate change. So they do English drama, English role play, but about climate change. And then the challenge is, first, the English vocabulary. So the challenge is always about the language itself, because environmental issues is content, right? In order for us to speak about the content, about something, we need to have the language. So the challenge is we need to scaffold, scaffold the language 
proficiency or the language kind of ex expresses ex experiences. Yeah, what it, what I call it? What is the term? A li linguistic development first. We need to focus on linguistic developments first for the students. For example, before we ask the students to give opinion about air pollution, they need to know what this air pollution is in their maybe first language, they need to have vocabularies in order for them to speak about air pollution. For example, dangers, the word dangerous, hazardous, inhale, clean air. So those kind of uh, expressions or English related vocabulary about environment, we need to scaffold students uh, environmental vocabularies or repertoire first. Then uh, we need to ask the students to speak about the content. So these are the challenge because sometimes they do not kind of have background knowledge about uh, the, the vocabulary because sometimes, because our students, English students, they are not solely our English students. They are also learned mathematics before our class, right? They also learn science before our class, meaning they have already background knowledge to talk about the environmental problems, but sometimes they do not able to speak it in English. So this is the challenge. Scaffolding first, the language proficiency or language, uh, yeah, language kind of tools first before they speak it. Uh, <laughs> content that would, would uh, most probably become the challenge. And how I encounter that, of course, uh, I did the inter. Uh, I did kind of discussions about the vocabulary, and then ask the students to read the content, and then maybe look for the kind of English trans. Uh, L1 translation, we can use translinguaging approach. It does not necessarily, we can, we always use English all the time. We can use our mother tongue to understand the concept because this is the concept about environment, something, something sometimes difficult. So we can also use Indonesian or maybe Myanmar language and our, our, our uh, mother tongue language to comprehend the content. So it's fine. We can use the approach of translinguaging in this case. I do hope that I can answer your questions, Ms. Karunia. Thank you very much, Chef Barry. Uh, welcome. Yeah, so, okay, the participants, teachers, if you have more questions and comments, you can have your mic on and talk to Chef Barry uh, in person uh, directly, or you can write up your questions and comments in the chat box so that we can read up to Chef Barry. Yeah. Off you go. I'm happy, everyone. And thank you so much for Myanmar Tisol to provide this amazing <clears throat> platform, pathways for us to really transform uh, yeah, and shift our uh, approach of teaching in English because we can achieve both uh, teaching environmental issues and at the same time uh, improving their proficiency in English. Because if we call it in a uh, business enterprise, there is a term called, this is not zero sum game. Meaning that uh, when we teach environmental issues, then in English, yeah, then the students will not learn anything about English proficiency, will not get English proficiency. No, content and language is always interconnected, inseparable, they are interwoven. When we speak about the content, we need the language. Yeah. So yeah, so they are inseparable, meaning that always hand in hand. Yeah. And uh, if you have got the link for the Facebook group, can you please share it again in the chat box? Okay. Uh, there are some people who might have missed uh, seeing the link. And if you have got, uh, actually I can see some of your, your publications yeah. here on the internet. And if you, uh, happy to share with us. Yes, that's great. Yeah, yeah. Your articles, your work. Yes. Uh, I'm right now writing Eco ELT book. I do hope that I can publish this year. Wow. So because I'm still collecting more. I'm I've been reading a hundred more than a hundred fifteen articles. Wow. A hundred fifteen articles and books, because I I I need to identify uh, because this is a new movement. 
uh, and I am the first person to introduce this movement. I need to comprehend and what EQLT like around rating a network to us about environmental teaching in, in countries such as ASEAN. And the first movement of environmental teaching in ELT was in 1918, 1980s, sorry, 1980 from scholars in French, in French. So in 1980, and it was integrated with ESP framework, English for a specific framework, but those framework is only achievable in higher education level. So yeah, so it's not inclusive enough. So that's why I, I propose Eco ELT for the for the general umbrella of term and framework for us to move forward. Yeah. 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 Your your research on ELT and uh the eco environmental issue, they are really, really amazing because we human beings, we live in the nature and, and we can't stay away from this so it's good to learn about nature to love nature to care for nature to protect nature so i think this is a great project so we wish you well and here we have got some questions from uh mr Cloyd conception okay let me read it for you mm -hmm. your talk is very insightful dr Seifel. eco eld is such a promising area in teaching and researching Myanmar and the Philippines, my country, are part of Southeast Asian nations. We both know that our countries have been centered on different calamities. That is, I would agree with you that we will start integrating eco pedagogy as an approach to teaching in English, language classroom to educate our students, teachers, and administra administrators, and about environmental issues. My question is, can we also study Eco ELT in quantitative research methods. Do you have some research instruments you can suggest that we can adapt uh, from for a quantitative research in ELT in eco ELT? Uh, a great question. A wonderful Jeffrey? questions. Thank you very much for Gloyd <laughs> uh, and conceptions. Uh, I'll say that I wouldn't agree more. It was wonderful. Yeah, it, it is true that we are our Southeast, especially in Global South, yeah, Global South countries, especially in ASEAN, we have mountains, volcanic mountains. We have that's that's also this already different from USA or America or UK. So we have uh kind of mountains, we have our specific or peculiar environmental problems across our regions of ASEAN, and that uh, creates a lot of environmental problems and that needs approaches or solutions from all across disciplines, including our field of study. Regarding your questions about research, is the research of ECOELT be able to uh, be a part of quantitative approach? Yes, yes, we can. For example, uh, current study that I mentioned earlier, uh, published in ELT journal from Oxford University, this top journal, my article is still in review there. <laughs> so ELT journal, there is a survey for, for example, you need to understand the perceptions or the cognitions, yeah, the thinking, the knowledge of English teachers right now about environmental issues, because in approach in the theory of teacher cognition, language teacher cognition, what we think, what we believe, and what we uh, kind of our thinking, our belief, our knowledge as teachers will influence what we do in the classroom. So what we do in the classroom actually is the manifestations of what we believe, what we think, and what we know as an English teacher. So. In order for English teachers to teach about environmental issue in English classroom, then they need to know what is the environmental issues. Then they need to have the belief that environmental issues is important to be integrated in English classes and how to teach that. And those are the area that we can research about uh, using quantitative study. We can have questionnaire and survey 
strongly agree to strongly disagree, for example, and then we can calculate it and put it in SPSS and quantify how many percent or maybe there we can compare yeah their knowledge with their practices for example their belief with their practices for example either their knowledge about uh climate change for example will be also in line with what we do in the classroom so we can also do that kind of activity is there and any kind of or uh kind of instruments for that yes we have and then for example nature connectedness yeah there is instrument out there talking about nature connectedness i have a lot uh instruments related to nature connectedness so we can integrate instruments uh research instruments that is already published and reliable yeah and then we can also use that in our classes their nature connectedness their feeling of oneness their empathy to nature and so on so we can use both even we can use mixed methods yeah that's really great. I wish that we could uh, do research uh, as a region uh, together, okay, in collaboration with the, yeah, sure. uh, you know, everyone here. So if you are interested and if you want to have some survey, you can have, we can, we are happy to host a survey here through the Google form on our page. Yeah, if you want to connect, collect the data. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, thank you very much for your help, Myanmar Tisol. And uh, there's someone raising the hand. Yeah. Uh, it's from Nao Triwanyan Tu. Okay, so um, uh, sir or madam, if you have a question, you can have your mic on and talk to us directly. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, I have a question for Mr. Jeffrey. Mm -hmm. I am uh teacher in vocational high school you know that in vocational high school must be met uh, with the industrial or technology mm -hmm. how do we teach uh, echo what uh echo yeah environmental issues yeah environmental use it in our uh, subject in vocational high school because you know that uh vocational high school met with the industrial or technology okay thank you mr Steve. very good questions well remember that i'm earlier that eco elp first attempt was in 1980 and it was related to esp what does it mean it was related to vocational things right so if you are connected with uh, teachers or in a field of teaching, for example, uh, mechanical engineering, yeah, or maybe ICT. And then you can also integrate about the topic of environmental, for example, green industry, how we can, yeah, for how we can uh, produce, produce kind of machines that are renewable, that are friendly for environment. Because environmental problems also actually happen because of the causes is also because of industry. Yeah. Mechanical engineering, for example, we can also uh, talk about uh, the transportations. Yeah, the transportations. What are the machines that are good for uh, producing uh, kind of sustainable transportations? So we can look for texts that are relevant to the context of vocational high school. If the vocational high school related to kind of the economic, then we have more choices, a lot of choices. For example, green economy, how we can do business that are uh, fine for us to get profit, but at the same time, we do not uh, kind of harm nature but at the same time we get the profit. So we can also discuss about it and take, uh, take uh, kind of uh, resources about the videos, about text, maybe about news, yeah? News about the media. So we can also, we have ways actually. We, we need to devote the time actually to uh, look for 
references or maybe teaching materials, and then we can integrate that in our teaching. It does not necessarily mean necessarily that we need to uh, teach environmental issues the whole semester. If you can, then off you go. I'm I'm glad for that. But we can also integrate maybe one, two team meetings, maybe three meetings that are relevant with our context of study uh, in teaching environmental issues. So we have, actually we have the, we have, uh, and we can teach environmental issues in the context of vocational high schools. There are a lot of references. We just need a time to look for it. And you can join the groups and then we can share those kind of, you can scroll down a lot of uh, kind of math, uh, teaching materials shared by other people there. Yeah. yeah thank you. Yeah. Anytime, thank you. Noah. Thank you very much for, you. Your for your questions. Thank you, Professor. And here's one more person who has raised his or her hand, Lucia Chuto Nula. Okay, thank you. Um, go. Hi, Mr. Jeffrey. Hi, Lucia. Yeah. Nice yeah. I'm sorry, I cannot off uh, on my camera because uh, no my uh, connected is not stable. <laughs> yeah, I am a teacher of a uh, conflict area oh. in Papua. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm so lucky uh, um, to join your topic uh, tonight. Yeah, my question is a uh, simple. Uh, in my mind, yeah. Uh, your topic is uh, about uh, teaching learning processes connected with the environment. So uh, my question is, uh, uh, at my place, I cannot do it because uh, our place is not safe. Like every day uh, we hear the guns, yeah, the guns shoot every, every day. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, maybe you have any idea how I can do it, yeah? How I can do it to give, um, to make the students understand uh, how they learn, how they learn natural, but uh, I can do it uh, good because uh, the condition is not support me. Okay, well, yeah. I would like to ask first, who is your students, what grade? Uh, I'm at uh, junior high school. Okay. I am a teacher uh, at junior, junior high, high school. school. You yeah. still meet your students? Yeah. Sometimes. Uh, uh, yeah. Do you still meet yeah, your yeah, students yeah. in yeah. person in class? I right? meet them, but now. Uh, or you do online? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Students. Of course. Yeah. So you, you still meet your students, right? No, 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 no. Uh, I meet them directly. Yeah, yeah. We have, uh, we have uh, teaching learning processes uh, okay. every time. Every, okay. Every but day. then, yeah. why okay. I ask that? Because I need to know the context. I cannot apply my solutions oh. directly without asking your context. You are in a conflict area. That's the first thing. Second, you still teach your students face-to-face, -face, meaning that you have a chance to meet them, right? To teach them. That's the second one. The third one, uh, you are in a rural area in Papua where you are, play, your place has a lot of beautiful uh, sceneries of environment. But the situation is that you are in conflict area where you do not, cannot move uh, kind of freely because of the A, B, C, D happening outside that maybe yes, uh, yes, becomes yes, challenge yes, for your right. safety. Yeah. And how to teach in environmental issues, especially in English classes, in that kind of context. First, this is what is happening. This is what I can suggest. You sit down in the classroom. I believe that there is kind of uh, animals around the classroom, maybe ants, yeah, maybe mosquitoes. Do we need to go out to the nature to get mosquitoes? No, mosquitoes coming to us, so we don't need to look for outside. Yeah, it's correct, right? 
mosquito is looking for us. So we don't need to go out to nature. And then, well, the nature is, there is conflicting area. We can still in the classroom to observe our classroom, especially you are in rural area, right? Yeah. And then you are in Papua where a lot of environmental, uh, environmental kind of uh, beautiful things about the environment there. You can still in the classroom, you observe in the class what animals and uh, or plants around them and inside your class or maybe outside the school, maybe uh, in the park or in the garden. Yeah, they need to observe this. And then after observe, they need to go, uh, to go into the nature. I mean, uh, to go back to the class if we, they observe animals and plants outside the class. But if they observe around the class or inside the class, then they need to like observe them. And afterwards you can ask them if the secondary high school, I mean like junior high school, you can ask them, what is it this animal? What is the name this animal in English? Because rural area, there is a spaci spatial treatment. We cannot compare the teaching of rural area with urban area or city area. We cannot we need to have spatial treatment because yeah because they need to have a uh, more uh, kind of uh, guidance for them to acquire language to get language even they do not sometimes they do not know the national language of bahasa indonesia indonesian language they more uh, attached to their local language so what I, what i can say about that is that you can ask your students to observe the nature inside the class or outside the class. That's the first one. Second one, second one after they know the nature, nature meaning the animals and plants, mosquitoes, and then others, cockroach, for example. And then you can ask their vocabularies. What is the vocabularies uh, of these animals? Second one, the habitats, where they live. And afterwards, the fourth one, you can ask further. Maybe you can integrate with writing yeah. one one sentence writing or maybe you can a paragraph if they can but if they cannot then you can just uh in one sentence writing so the vocabulary their habitat and then the second one is their role for example what is their role what is their importance their life for example why they live what 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 why cockroach live why we do not kill them yeah why must we why we do not let mosquito bite us so this kind of small conversation we do not need to go out to the nature and face the conflict situation because we do not we do not want to die anyway so we just observe thank in the you, class what is nature inside the class i believe there is nature inside the class if you do it online although you do not see nature you can see nature inside the your body. You can ask how many glasses you drink water. Is water a part of the nature? Yes, of course. What if you do not live with water? What happened to your body? Oh, maybe I will be thirsty. I can also be dehydrated and maybe die. So meaning there is conversations about nature teaching about nature, although we do not see nature directly. We do it online like this. Do you see nature right now? <laughs> no, right? We have conversations about nature, but you understand nature. So it does not necessarily mean that we need to go out to nature. We can, but in situations that it, in situations, dangerous situations, if we go out to nature, then do not go out. For example, uh, in, in situations like lockdown during COVID, and maybe there is hazardous events, disasters in our environment that are impossible for us to go out to the nature, then we just do it online or we just teach it like in our class. So that's what I can uh, see or what can I can suggest. Please see nature around us and make use of nature around us close to us to be a teaching material in your class. Okay, that's probably my suggestions. Thank you very much for wonderful questions. Yeah, thank you. I get it. I get, get your point. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lucia, and nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too.
Thank you very much, uh, Professor Jeffrey and all the participants. We have sent you the link for the evaluation where you can write up your thinking and opinions about this webinar. And if you have some questions, you can even write there uh, to address to the speaker here. And um, okay, and okay, we uh, we we like to inform you that we will send out the certificates in two weeks' time. Okay, so please look up for look up for the certificates in two weeks' time. We're trying to reach out to you. And um, are there any more questions? Uh, I think there is some question here. Let me see. Yeah, the question is from uh, Chanti Dinasari. Can you give best practice idea on how to carry out a project-based learning activity for higher education context, especially specifically in issue how to conserve our environment to global warming threat and reduce our carbon footprint? Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Very important question. Yeah. Thank you very much. And especially on the context of higher education, we have more room for higher education to do research and even to, do, to practice or to implement environmental teaching in our classes, especially in teacher education, yeah, English teacher education. They are future teachers and we have more flexibility than secondary teachers because we are in higher education. We have, we can, we can design the teaching materials. We can design teaching methods as as well as as long as what we want because we have the autonomy uh then uh the teachers in secondary or k12 teachers because they are already transcribed or they are already prepared by the government but we as a lecturer we have more room because we write or we design our syllabi ourselves and then we teach and we can have freedom to choose whatever uh, the teaching materials, teaching methods that we want. And regarding your questions about global warming, this is what I did. Uh, I teach, maybe last, last semester, I thought about uh, English uh, speaking for discussion. So there is a course called speaking for discussion in speaking classes. Yeah. And then I devote the time to talk about environmental issues such as global warming and also climate change in three meetings. Yeah, and then this is, I call it uh, using, wait a minute, I would like to share. Maybe this is also benefit for you all guys. This is called uh, World Coffee Technique, World Coffee Method. Wait a minute, I would like to looking for it. Hope okay. I would like to share the screen so that you have maybe you can add this or implement this in your study, uh, or in your practice in higher education or even in secondary education. This is called a world coffee method. Wait a minute, you can just have it. So you can see here the students are assigned to several groups, right? So in one group, there is note taker and there is moderator in one group. And there is also members for discussion. So in this case, the students, this is the topic of global warming. For example, this is the topic of global warming. They're discussing a lot about global warming. And this group number one, for example, you can see my uh, cursor, right? My hand, this one. This one talking about the causes of global warming. This one talking about what is global warming. This one talking about the impacts of global warming. This one talking about the solutions to global warming. And the students need to go uh, kind of clockwise to all groups to understand global warming. So this is called World Cafe Method. So we discuss about world issues using kind of the kind of methods when we, because we always like drinking tea, right? Maybe drinking coffee in a cafe. So we situate the activity of speaking uh, like they are as if they are in cafe, they drink coffee, but they talk about the world issue. They do not talk about their friends, like gossiping and so on. They like, like gossiping, but we change gossiping uh, into the world issues. So we situate our classes to be like a cafe, discussion cafe, 
uh, gossiping about world issue, especially global warming. So we can use this kind of uh, world cafe method. That's the first thing. The second way we can use also in higher education, a uh, technique called, uh, what is it? You end meeting assembly. All right, this one. I asked my students, if we talk about global warming, I asked my students to choose which country they like. For example, they choose South Korea, Myanmar, Indonesia, UK, and so on. And they have time to look for global warming problems and ecological footprint problems in their chosen country. So they have a week, for example, next week, this is a homework. And then the next week we will discuss and they need to print out um, or write the flag or draw the flag of their chosen country and then their name. And we as a teacher or lecturer, we position ourselves as the president of the UN, United Nations meeting. So we, we invite, okay, I welcome uh, the representative or the delegates of uh, Myanmar to speak about environmental problems of Yuko. Thank you very much. And then they see, they will tell about, uh, they will call us as Mr. or Mrs. President. Mrs. President, thank you for your time. I would like to uh, use your time to, I would like to exercise the time to echo about about environmental problems, especially the topic of global warming in Myanmar. So we need to, this is kind of also discussions method, but we, we, we innovate, we have creativity and innovations. We apply or adapt the UN United Nations meeting assembly into our classes. And I, I receive a positive response for the students because they, they, they position themselves as a diplomat. So they position themselves as the representations or the delegates of a country, important person. They need to speak about uh, global warming, representing their chosen country. And we are as the moderator, as the presidents of UN meeting. And those kind of the examples to examples that I can share for you, practical examples, for you to integrate global warming in higher education practices. I thank you. I, I do hope that I answer your questions and give you insights. Anyway, that's not only global warming. You can integrate any kind of topics with a uh, cafe, world cafe method and UN meeting assembly method. Thank you very much. Looking at the time, I think uh, we have gone past uh, 9 p.m. in Indonesia. Yeah. And it's almost 9. I think for most of us, it's a Saturday, it's a family time. So we'll take one last question from the participant, then we will close the session. Of you go, if you have questions that popping up your mind. Oh, comments or a word of thank to the speaker. Yeah. yeah, I think no. Well, anyway, we can have conversations in the group of Eco ELT if you want to have more or contact me through my email. I would love to have you all. We still connected. Hello. Um, okay. So yes. Before we say goodbye to everyone, uh, on behalf of the Mimati Sol and all participants today, we would like to extend our heartfelt thanks to Professor Jeffrey for your time, effort, and great contribution to the professional development to teachers. Uh, we learned about the impact of climate change, biodiversity loss the environmental issues. We also learned English students are global sustainable citizens and they are English students who must be proficient in English to be a part of global citizens. In order to be uh, in the movement of ELT, uh, we came to know that we can design our own lesson plans and teaching materials that incorporate environmental themes and issues. We can use various sources or literature, such as poems, stories, and sounds to engage our students in critical thinking and creative expression about the environment. 
And we can also encourage our students to participate in environmental activities and projects such as recycling, planting, or campaigning. Uh, so by joining Eco ELT, we can contribute to the global movement of saving the planet and creating a better future for all. And our helpful thanks also go to these attendees here for your time, presence, and active participation throughout. Last but not the least, we would like to say thank you to teacher May and our team members for all your time, support, and contribution for our Myanmar Tea So Great Success and to make this webinar happen. So thank you very much. Yeah. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you very much, all of you. Thank you very much. And have a 